Up to now, we've been looking at right triangles. So to define the six trig functions, we used right triangles. And now we're going to switch gears a little bit and look at oblique triangles. So what are oblique triangles? It just means that one of the angles does not have to be a right angle. And so there are only two possibilities of the types of angles you can have in an oblique triangle. The first is that all the angles are acute, which means that they're less than 90 degrees. And the second option is that two are acute and one is obtuse. Now remember that the three angles have to add up to 180, so it would be impossible to have two obtuse angles because if two of them are greater than 90, when you would add them, they would be greater than 180. So these are your only, three poss your only two possibilities, three acute angles or two acute and one obtuse. Now I put a note here and actually I'm going to highlight it because it's very, very important. The Pythagorean theorem in Sokotoa can only be used if you have a right angle. So anytime, if you do not know if you have a right angle, you cannot use the Pythagorean theorem and you cannot use Sokotoa. So we are going to learn what do we use if we don't have a right angle. And that's going to be the law of sines and the law of cosines. So we're going to be solving a triangle, which we have done before with a right angle. And now we're just going to do it for obliques. As a review, what does solving a triangle mean? Solving a triangle means that you are given three pieces of the triangle and you want to find the missing three. Because remember, you have three sides, three angles. As a reminder from before, the angles and the sides are always across from each other. So little a is across from big A, little c is across from big C, and little b is across from big B. So I have four cases, and these four cases are dependent on what three pieces you're given. And dependent on what kind of pieces you're given, you're going to be in a specific case. And depending on what case you are, you're going to solve it in a certain way. So case one is that you're given two angles and any side. So two angle and one side. So you either write that as AAS or ASA. We're not really going to be writing that. You just need to know that two angles, one side is case one. We're going to be doing this in this video. Case two is going to be the hardest case. Case two is called the ambiguous case. It is two sides and one angle opposite of one of them. So what that means is that based on the two sides that you're given, the angle that you're given matches with one of the sides. So for example, little a, little b, big B. Or little b, little c, big B. Or little b, little c, big C. So the angle you're given has to match one of the sides you're given. And that puts you in the ambiguous case. This is going to be very, very important that you know that you're in the ambiguous case. Case three is also going to be two sides and an angle. But now the angle is not associated to one of the sides. So for example, little a, little b, then you have to be given angle c. Or little a, little c, angle b or little b, little c, angle a. Those are the only three possibilities for case three. All the letters have to be different with two sides and one angle, which is again different than case two, where the angle matches one of the sides. And then case four is three sides, <laughs> SSS. So case one and case two, we're gonna use the law of sines. In case three and case four, we're going to use the law of cosines. And I'll explain why you cannot use the law of sines when we get to case three and case four. So in this video, I'm going to do case one. And in the following video, I will do the ambiguous case. So the law of sines is very simple. It's a law of ratios. And what it tells you is that these three ratios are always equal to each other. That the sine of angle A over the side A is the same ratio as the sine of B over little b, which is the same ratio as the sine of C over little c. Now, normally you never use them all three at the same time. You use two at a time. So case one, remember case one is two angles and one side. And it doesn't matter which side is given to you or which angle is given to you. So we're going to do two examples. So we're going to solve this triangle. As you can see, we are definitely in case one. We have two angles and case one is the only one where you have two angles. So as soon as you see two angles, you know you're in case one. And when you're in case one, you're automatically going to use the law of sines. So what I'm missing is I'm missing little b little c and big c now out of those three the easiest one to solve for is the last angle so big c 
is going to be 180 minus 40 minus 30. So big C is going to be 110 degrees. So I'm in the situation where I have two acute and one obtuse angles. Now, once you have a matching pair, the matching pair is what you're going to use in the law of sine. And the matching pair that I have is A because I have big A and I have little a. So this is how I'm going to set up my law of signs. I'm going to have the sine of A over little a is going to be the sine of, and it doesn't really matter which one you solve for, it's going to require the same amount of work. I'm going to solve for little b first. So now we plug in the sine of 40 degrees over 4 is equal to the sine of 30 over b, little b, which I'm missing. So I'm going to cross multiply. I'm going to come over here where I have a little bit more space. I'm going to have b sine of 40 degrees is equal to 4 sine of 30. So I'm going to bring this one over here and this one over here. And then I divide by sine of 40 degrees. And the other thing I can do is I know what the sine of 30 degrees is. The sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. So 4 times 1 half is 2 over the sine of 40 degrees. So this is my little b. And to solve for little c, I'm going to do it exactly the same way. So sine of 40 over 4. But now I'm going to have the sine of 110 degrees over little c. That means that c sine of 40 degrees is equal to 4 sine of 110 degrees. And then I'll divide by sine of 40. And I don't know 110 or 40 without a calculator. So this one I cannot simplify anymore. And here it is. Now, all of these, this is called calculator ready form because we do not use calculators. So you could find an approximation. These are going to be decimals. So no, most of the time, if they want an answer, like in the computer system, they will ask you to round to the nearest tenth or to the nearest one hundredth. Just be careful which how they're what they want you to round to. And also make sure that if you're using a calculator, that it's set in degree mode if you are using degrees, okay? Because that's going to matter. Let's do one more of these. So I'm definitely in case one. So I am missing now big C, little a, little b. So again, I'm going to find big C first, 180. And you don't have to be given big A and big B. That was just a coincidence. So 35 plus 75 is 110, which means that big C is going to be 70 degrees. Done. So now I have a matching pair. My matching pair is the C's because I have big C and I have little c. So I'm going to have the sine of 70 degrees over 5 is the sine of 35 degrees over A because this is big A. I cross multiply a sine of 70 degrees is equal to 5 sine of 35. I don't know 35 or 70, so I can't simplify. And then I isolate a. You are not done solving until your variable is completely isolated. Here it is. And last but not least, it's exactly the same. I'm going to do little b sine of 70 degrees over 5 is equal to the sine of 75 degrees over little b. And b will be 5 sine of 75 degrees over sine of 70. So I did skip a step here. I went directly into division. Be careful doing that, right? Only do it if you're very comfortable with your algebra. Otherwise, take that extra step. And here we are. So this is how you do case one.